Hello everybody, <coughs> we are now starting the second topic under fuels and we are now in the unit 2B of engineering chemistry. Now in today's topic we will be learning about how to determine the calorific value of a solid and liquid fuel with the help of a bomb calorimeter. Now, uh, the bomb calorimeter is the equipment or the apparatus that is used for the determination of the calorific value of a solid and liquid fuel. Now, when a definite amount of fuel is placed inside the calorimeter and the fuel is ignited, then the fuel starts to burn in the presence of oxygen. So, a definite amount of heat is liberated out. Now, the heat that is liberated out from the fuel as a result of the burning uh, in the presence of oxygen is used. The heat is used in heating the uh, entire uh, uh, bomb calorimeter. Now water is also placed inside the calorimeter. So the heat uh, liberated from the fuel is used to uh, uh, heat the calorimeter as well as the water that is placed inside the calorimeter. So the principle of calorimeter states that the heat liberated by a fuel is equal to the heat absorbed by the water as well as the bomb calorimeter. Now this is the construction of a bomb calorimeter. Now this is a very vital diagram and uh, this is the schematic diagram of a bomb calorimeter and uh, uh, as per this diagram we can see that there is a bomb or uh, which is an enclosed vessel. Uh, the, the vessel is marked in shaded grey and this vessel is made of steel, stainless steel. Now the uh, purpose of uh, using stainless steel for uh, the bomb material is uh, is to uh, resist the corrosion that means it is uh, uh, it helps to prevent corrosion and it also uh, uh, the capacity of the stainless steel is to withstand the pressure uh, of maximum 50 atmospheres because the fuel is placed inside the bomb and when the fuel burns uh, inside this enclosed chamber a lot of pressure is created inside the bomb so the material of the bomb uh, needs to withstand the high pressure of uh, the, uh, the high pressure because of the combustion of the fuel inside the bomb now uh, the bomb is uh, uh, covered with a lid and it is the lid is tightly uh, um, covering the bomb and the lid is equipped with valves for the entry of electrodes. So these are two electrodes. You can see the red uh, lines. They are nothing but electrodes and the electrodes are entering the bomb and between the two electrodes there is the uh, ignition coil and the material of the ignition coil is the is a metal uh, which is magnesium so the mag it's the magnesium ignition coil now a crucible the crucible is made of either steel or silica fused silica and this crucible is placed inside the bomb and the crucible is containing a definite amount of fuel uh, that needs to be burnt and for which the calorific value has to be determined. Now the fuel uh, is placed inside the crucible and the crucible is placed inside the bomb. So this is all about the bomb and uh, another thing is that the lid is the, the, the lid that is covering the bomb is also equipped with a valve for the entry of the oxygen supply. So this is the uh, oxygen supply and this oxygen supply uh, uh, the tube it helps to uh, pass the oxygen into the bomb and oxygen is a vital parameter which is required for the efficient burning of the fuel. Now the bomb is now placed inside a bucket now you can see that the outer uh, uh, the outer uh, container is the bucket and this bucket is uh, made of uh, copper uh, and this is not known as the copper calorimeter the bucket is known as the copper calorimeter and the material is copper why because copper is a good conductor of heat so now the copper calorimeter or the bucket containing the bomb is also uh, having a definite volume of water so the, the the blue thing is nothing but water 
and this water is placed uh, uh, in a definite volume inside the copper calorimeter now the copper calorimeter or the bucket is uh, equipped with a stirrer and a thermometer now the the purpose of the stirrer is to stir the water inside the copper calorimeter uh, continuously uh, uh, this is for uh, the uh, even mixing of the temperature so that means the temperature has to be evenly distributed during the burning of the fuel so that means when the fuel is burning inside the bomb the heat that is liberated out it helps to heat the copper calorimeter as well as the water so that means the uh, uh, the purpose of the stirrer is to evenly distribute the temperature that is uh, uh, that is gaining uh, and that is helping in rising the temperature inside the copper calorimeter. So the stirrer is to uh, ensure proper mixing of the or pro proper distribution of the temperature inside the copper calorimeter. Now let us come to the thermometer. The thermometer is placed inside the copper calorimeter and it is dipped into the water and the purpose of the thermometer is to measure the temperature of the uh, of the water so that means when the fuel is burning and the heat is liberated so as the temperature uh, rises so uh, inside the um, bomb the the temperature of the water also increases spontaneously and the rise in the temperature is measured by the Beckman's thermometer now now this copper calorimeter is uh, enclosed uh, outside by a air jacket you can see that this is here written air space the air is uh, the in the air acts as an insulating layer and it helps to prevent the loss of heat from the copper calorimeter by a radiation now uh, this is the outer covering of the bomb calorimeter is an insulating jacket you can see on the left hand side it's written insulating jacket now the insulating jacket it helps to prevent the loss of heat uh, from the copper calorimeter so this is all about the construction of a bomb calorimeter so we have the bomb uh, the bomb is made of stainless steel and the bomb is a enclosed chamber it is covered by a lid and the lid is provided with valves for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, electrodes and the electrodes are uh, two electrodes are there inside the bomb and the electrodes are connected via a magnesium ignition coil now the electrodes are connected to ignition wires and they are they are connected to battery for the flow of electricity through the electrodes now the uh, inside the bomb there is the uh, crucible now the crucible this is made of either stainless steel or fused silica and this crucible it houses the uh, fuel for for which the calorie calorific value has to be determined now a definite amount of fuel is placed inside the crucible and that is ignited for the uh, evolution of the heat now this bomb is now placed inside the bucket which is made of copper and this is designated as the copper calorimeter the copper calorimeter is having a definite volume of water and uh, it is equipped with a stirrer and a thermometer. The purpose of the stirrer is to uh, stir the water for uh, the even distribution of temperature and the thermometer is there to measure the rise in temperature as the fuel is burning. Now the copper calorimeter is now enclosed uh, from the outside from all sides uh, by airspace. The purpose of the airspace is to prevent any heat loss from the copper calorimeter and the outside covering of the bomb calorimeter is the insulating jacket and the this jacket the purpose of the jacket is to prevent any loss of heat from the copper calorimeter or from the water or from the fuel via radiation. So this is all about the construction of the bomb calorimeter. 
now this is what whatever i have said in the previous slide this is written here so it consists the bomb calorimeter consists of the following parts a strong cylindrical bomb made of stainless steel now it is resistant to corrosion and capable of withstanding high pressure up to 50 atmospheres now the uh, bomb is provided with the lid which can be screwed firmly to the bomb the lid is equipped with two electrodes and an oxygen inlet valve now a small ring is attached to one of the electrodes which act as a support for the crucible now the second point is a copper calorimeter vessel is used which contains a known weight of water and in which the bomb is placed now the calorimeter is surrounded by a air jacket to prevent loss of heat due to radiation the calorimeter is provided with the electric stirrer for stirring the water and it is also equipped with a bakemen thermometer to measure the temperature now the crucible in which the sample is placed is made of stainless steel or fused silica so uh, let us come to the working of the bomb calorimeter here you see that uh, uh, a weight amount of sample is placed that means sample means the fuel is placed in the silica crucible supported over the ring now a fine magnesium wire touching the sample of the fuel is stretched across the electrodes about 10 ml of distilled water is introduced into the bomb to absorb vapors of sulfuric acid and nitric acid formed during the combustion now oxygen supply is forced into the bomb at a pressure of 25 to 30 atmospheres the bomb is then carefully placed in the calorimetric vessel containing a known amount of water now water is stirred with a stirrer and the temperature is recorded the electrodes are connected to a battery and the circuit is completed the combustion of fuel takes place with the evolution of heat the heat produced by burning is transferred to the water which is stirred throughout the experiment with the stirrer maximum temperature is recorded and the gross calorific value is calculated so let us go to the previous uh, diagram here so here let me explain to you the working of the bomb calorimeter we are first placing a definite uh, weight of the fuel inside the crucible and then we are going to add 10 ml of water inside the bomb to uh, absorb any gaseous substance present uh, during the burning of the fuel so that means if the fuel is containing uh, suppose nitrogen or sulfur as inorganic elements so when the fuel is burning the nitrogen gets converted to nitric acid and the sulfur gets converted to sulfuric acid now this are uh, exothermic reaction that means the conversion of nitrogen and sulfur to nitric acid and sulfuric acid they are exothermic reaction and the uh, uh, that means they give uh, amount of heat and that is uh, included in the calorific value so in order to avoid such errors we are adding 10 ml of water inside the bomb so as to absorb the nitric acid and sulfuric acid during the burning of the fuel now the bomb is now placed inside the calorimeter and uh, the calorimeter is having a definite volume of water and the initial temperature is recorded that means the initial temperature of the water is recorded and then the lids are covered the uh, electrodes are connected to the battery and the circuit is completed so when the current flows through the electrode uh, the current flows through the magnesium metal and uh, it starts to heat up so the heat liberated it helps to ignite the fuel and when the fuel starts to burn uh, heat is evolved and we find that the temperature of the water increases slowly so uh, till a maximum temperature is reached that means when the total amount of fuel has been burnt completely so maximum temperature of the, uh, uh, the liberated the uh, maximum temperature of the water will be recorded by the thermometer the stirrer helps to stir the water for even distribution of the temperature and from which the uh, calorific value is now determined thank you for listening to this uh, video